Good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going over Eve's chapters 11 through 14. Um, I've kind of talked about it before, but just to kind of underscore that Eve's is sort of like the OG of uh, this whole like YouTube um, stardom thing. Like he's the one, he has a lot of big YouTube names that have worked under him. Um, and again, of course, part of YouTube is that you don't need any sort of agent or anything like that. And obviously, um, the appeal is that it looks as though um, this is just one person and, you know, the, the, that connection to their audience. That is so paramount. Um, but the fact of the matter is that you are still having to um, create content for an audience. And with that comes the ability to persuade an audience and the ability to excite an audience and the ability uh, to really get people to buy into you. So um, Eves is kind of the master of this. He has a marketing background, um, understands people, understands um, the technology, and that's why we kind of lean on him. And again, so have a, a lot of really big names that you've heard of. And... <clears throat> in the social media space. So, um, Eve's during this section, this is where he kind of dives into the actual YouTube formula, which is, um, him talking about like really how to be successful on YouTube. You guys, um, already have heard some of this. A lot of this is from, uh, from our other text, but Eve's goes deeper into it. Um, so kind of keep that in mind as you're reading him. It's not always the most interesting text. It's a little dry sometimes um, because he's talking a lot about data and numbers. Uh, but that's, you know, we, we've hit the kind of the surface with our other text and now we're kind of digging in. Um, one thing he really talks about is the importance of basically uh, creating for humans, optimizing for humans, but not forgetting the AI version part of this, the robotic part of it. So you do still want to make those tags and all of that. Um, but, but even more importantly, you want to make sure that your content is what your viewers want. Now, he warns that you may assume you know what your viewers want, um, but then this is where the data comes in. You look at the data and it tells you otherwise. So today we're going to kind of be looking at our analytics. I know that we're still new with our channels and a lot of us don't have like a, a lot of views yet, but you can go back and look at the views and see where, like you can actually see the, the exact moments where people are stopping to watch your content. So that's a really important uh, piece of information for us to have because if we know when people are stopping watching, we know how to adjust our content in the future. Like, okay, if this is where people are starting to get bored, then maybe we need to add in another element here. Maybe we need to switch camera angles. Maybe we need to shift tone, uh, but do something to keep people engaged. So that's the use at this point of data, not just um, what topics are people clicking on, but really at what point are they also losing interest so that we can adjust um, our format. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, um, I think this is something that's really interesting. He says, you know, align your goal with YouTube's goal. So he talks about how he used to um, try to trick YouTube, he, you know, doing clickable uh, titles or whatever, tr trying to find things were, that were trending that were really kind of off topic of what he was doing, but knowing that people would click if um, if he, he did that. So, you know, clickbaity stuff. Um, he talked about how unsuccessful that was and that finally what he realized is instead of trying to beat YouTube, um, how you win is to partner with YouTube. So um, you, YouTube's goal ultimately is to get people to watch videos on YouTube for as long as possible. That's their goal, very easy, very simple. He suggests your goal to be the same, right? Like. What can you do to keep people watching your videos on YouTube as long as possible? The more successful you are with that, the more YouTube is going to suggest your content to other people. And of course, the more you will then be um, 
successful in that that format that platform i mean and then the more success you have the more you're suggested etc so very important to align with youtube's goals to try to find try to create content that people are liking and watching um throughout you definitely don't want something where people are clicking and then stopping watching it because that um hurts your standing in the algorithm um he talks some about title I'm, I'm gonna not talk too much about title and thumbnails yet we're gonna dig into that later but um he talked about how the title ideally is fewer than 60 ca characters which is very tough for us um so do start thinking about catchy titles that aren't too long and we're going to talk more about that like i said later um but this is what of everything in these these uh, few chapters this is what i really want you guys focusing on um this next part and that is making sure that there is a story arc making sure that your video whatever kind of video you have is presented as a story um, and that may not be something that is uh, as obvious how to do in your niche as one may think. Uh, or, it, it, yeah, it may not be as obvious as you think, but it's there, right? So, the urge and interest of stories goes back as far as there was a fire for humans to stand around, right? There's always been storytelling. Even if it's grunts and acting something out, humans love stories. Um, it engages us. It's what keeps us connected to something. Um, it doesn't have to be an epic story. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, the Odyssey. It doesn't have to be that big. But even if you are um, creating something, we need to know that this is what we're going to do. We're going to be creating, and then we need to follow along as you create something. And then we need to maybe see you struggle with some things, right? Uh, so, oh man, this didn't go go as planned. And then that really keeps people along for the ride. Um, and then maybe there's some sort of crisis, like, oh no, this is not going to work. And then of course, oh, we fix it. Um, and then, hey, here it is. So that's the basic story arc that you guys have learned since probably junior high, maybe even middle school. This plot of, uh, you know, a, a story plot. I want us to start thinking of framing our YouTube videos according to that story plot. Um, start out with some sort of hook. So um, we've talked about that, that a lot of people decide within the first five seconds if they're going to um, finish watching the video or continue watching the video. So within the first five seconds, you need to give them some reason to, that they're going to sink their teeth into your video. And then you are going to, um, once you've got them hooked, you're going to re-engage with them. So uh, this is what we're doing, right? And like I said, you're going to keep engaging with them as, as our plot. Uh, diagram is going up into this rising action so maybe introduce a little bit of conflict um and then um some sort of crisis and again it doesn't have to be a giant crisis it could be your your knitting and oh no my i had i thought i had 13 stitches and i've been doing 14 this whole time you know like it, it just whatever is in within your um your niche you're playing a game and oh, this is a dead end. How can I get back, right? Um, then you resolve whatever that is. And then um, he says to have a goosh. And a goosh is like that kind of little gem at the end of like, aha, that everyone's really uh, kind of pleased to see. And then there's a wrap up. Um, something nice to do during, during your wrap up is to say, um, I have a video associated with this, blah, blah, blah link. I, I'll put the link in the comments. Um, but to refer them to another one of your videos. So if you can do that, get people, start trying to frame your videos. The, at the end, it's linking to another one of your videos so that you kind of have this cycle. 
that really helps you in the algorithm as well. If someone is choosing to go and watch your next video, that really helps. Um, so here is an example that Eves gives <coughs> of this, of following this format within 30 seconds. He talks about the Wendy's, uh, where's the beef commercial from the eighties. I know that that's way before your time. Um, but you know, it starts out little ladies with canes um like everyone's intrigued right because this is already looks funny then uh they give then you see them like sifting through the hamburgers buns and one lifts the bun off and there's a tiny pat beef patty and uh then of course there's the joke of where's the beef and that's what everyone that's what that commercial is known for um they go and they try to report the beef and then nobody behind the table there's no one to talk to them about it um and then you know when then there's like the tagline of wendy's that wraps it up so within that little 30 second commercial we're like invested in the course these little old ladies are taking <clears throat> how are they going to get their beef right <laughs> um and that catchphrase, you guys, I'm sure have heard, where's the beef? And may not even know where that has come from. It was a Wendy's commercial in the 80s. But it was so, um, it stuck around so well uh, because people did get so invested in these little old ladies. So, so if you haven't, go and watch that commercial. That kind of shows you, again, the perfect little um, example of this outline and where, where it goes. So what we're going to be doing this next uh, week, uh, it's going to have two parts on it. The first part is I want you guys to go and look at your analytics. It's time to, do, to check in with our analytics. I want you to see at what point people tend to stop watching your videos. And I want you to kind of write out w at what point that, that is happening. Um, I want you to kind of analyze it. Think about why it's happening. And then I want you to tell me how you're going to address that in future videos so that we can maintain that audience and um, interact with then the second thing you're going to do is you are going to write before you before you film your next video you're going to write just a very rough outline it does not have to be super detailed but a, a rough outline on um the hook the re-engagement the setup the climax the goosh and the wrap up that Eves talks about in his in his text. So um, just tell me what points you're going to make in your next video that hits all of those areas. And again, you don't have to describe, this doesn't have to be like a pages long thing. I just want to see ahead of time that you have given thought to the structure of your, um, of your video so that we know that you have, uh, considered you know that you have you have thought out what uh the format of your video is going to be um and i want you guys to have some experience it may be that you end up not doing this this format every time but i would like for you guys to start having some experience following this format because it's a very successful format um, and i would just like to see you guys um work on engaging your audience through storytelling. And that's really what this format does. So that will be the second part. Um, and then of course you will make your videos that will follow this format. Um, Eves also says to uh, not to, to, to not fall into the, cat, the um, mistake of creating content for yourself. You want to always consider your audience. Um, not that you ever want to be and true to yourself because obviously the hope is that um, the audience is seeing your authenticity and buying into your authenticity. So by all means, you don't want to in any way be um, untrue to yourself, um, but also make sure you're making content that your audience is wanting to watch because otherwise they're not going to watch it, right? Um, you can make content for yourself all day long but it's not going to get you views. So make sure that, that you are kind of finding that sweet spot between what your audience wants to see and what you want to create. Um, 
And then if you see that your audience isn't jiving with what you're doing, adjust what you're doing. And that's where that data comes into play again. So again, we're going to be looking at data. This, um, this time around so that we can adjust what we're doing, we're going to uh, create a brief outline, making sure that we are following um, that rough outline that, that Eves is, is telling us to follow. And then um, you guys are going to create your next video. Cannot wait. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.